Hello, welcome to Tears of Life podcast, where we research life so you don't have to. Episode 333, this is your host, Sean Tudor. 233, this is your host, Sean Tudor. And this is Sam. Damn, dude, I really was... Damn. You were feeling we were way further ahead. Oh, this is a two-hour episode. I was thinking we were crushing it. Yeah. This is a two-hour episode where we try to teach you something new. You're really like, we're going to go, go, go kind of. All right. Here's the deal. Going to give you an update. Then we're going to teach you something. And then we're going to move on. 20 minutes. Mm Mm-hmm. Less. Less than 20 minutes. All right. The government shutdown got postponed Mm -hmm. for another like 45 to 48 days, whatever that. Yeah. Whatever this comes out, whatever day. 47 days. Okay, whatever. That's postponed. Um, The government, uh, the the Democrats that have, so the Democrats that put forth the bill Mm -hmm. was maintain all like no, no budget cuts, Mm -hmm. no budget cuts at all. Um, Still funding Ukraine and not funding the border not funding the border and there was a clause for increased wages for all of the government officials like the the house and senate officials for doing nothing okay so then um it's the senate puts it forward and the house has passed it right i don't remember how it goes yeah house yeah i'm pretty sure that's how it goes i thought it goes house then senate and then the president oh uh, whatever so Whatever side has to pass it is the um, Republicans. And the Republicans have, I thought it was the House Majority. Maybe yeah. Yeah, House Majority. They have the House Majority. The They ended up passing it uh, September 30th, like an hour or a few hours before the deadline mm-hmm. for the government shutdown. And they ended up passing um, no budget cuts, no funding the border. Um, the clause for increased wages for them stays in there. The only thing changing is they're done funding Ukraine for 45 days. Woo. Yeah. So, um, no budget cuts, no helping the border. That's what we get. And they get to, they get a pay raise. It's just so dumb, right? So now we're not helping another country. We're not helping our own country, but we're going to give these people more money for doing nothing, for helping no one love it yeah the house the house speaker the house speaker i don't remember his name but he went into the thing was like we're gonna be adults here mike mccarthy mike mccarthy that's what it is is it mike mccarthy something like that anyways mitch that might be a old kirby packer coach i think it is mccarthy though yeah anyways goes in there says it's be adults pass the bill whatever um so um 126 republicans approved it 90 republicans didn't approve it yeah and yeah, the 90 Republicans that didn't approve it are kind of trying to, are thinking about kicking them out of... Uh, yeah, they're pissed. Yeah. Speaker As they House. should be. Dude, the the House Speaker said, like, we care about our government people, we care about our police officers, we care about our border patrol, you know, we care about all those people, firefighters, federal mm-hmm. government, we need to keep them paid so they can keep paying the bills. Well, what about the rest of the fucking country, dog, as we're just... Just well, bleeding money. And here's my thing. is like, okay, if we're not going to fund Ukraine, great. Let's use that money somewhere else. Towards the border. Right. Exactly. Or Hawaii. Or, or paying off debt. Fucking, a- yeah, anything. Okay. On the next thing. That was that. Any questions? No. I'll follow right, up. On to our topic of the day. Yes. What is it? Second opinions. Second opinions. I almost had a brain fart. I'm so happy I got to it. Party, babe. I did a blog on it. Yes. Okay. Second opinions. In many realms. Yeah. Do you want to start? I don't care. I'll let you start. Okay. Uh, do you want me to... St- I'll just start wherever I feel like doing. Um, like Sean said, second opinions in many realms. So we can start with like the medical side of things. Oh, that's good. Yep. Yep. Um, always get a second opinion. Not the, for the fact of like some doctors are wrong, but in the fact of most doctors you're going to go to aren't specialized. So they just have a general knowledge of whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's good to go get a second or third or fourth opinion because some people might have different backgrounds or might have seen something that another doctor hasn't seen yet. Um, Because, like, there was a story about this girl in California who was really sick for, like, two years. Mm -hmm. And she didn't figure out what it was until she had a doctor that was from the Midwest. That told her she had Lyme's because she visited North. Yeah, Yeah, she visited, like, North Dakota or something. Yeah. but yeah, so that is why you should get second opinions medical-wise. And like, some doctors are 
pro like surgeries some doctors are just like no you can fix this with physical therapy Mm -hmm. so it's good to get those other opinions because like surgery surgeries are pretty invasive tip a lot of them can be a lot of them can be yeah um so it's and no offense to hospitals i don't think they're the greatest sanitary wise don't trust many i've heard a lot of people getting fucking MRSA and Dude. gangrene and shit like that i don't so. trust a lot of that shit it's... there's just too many like risks of like other infections or other things happening mm-hmm. um with surgeries but with physical therapy like they're not cutting into you and like let's say you want to go the physical therapy route first and then six months to a year down the road it like doesn't improve right then you can get the surgery or save up a fuck ton go to mexico and get their opinion right or yeah go to a different country and see what they got for you too love it medical that was yeah that's a really good one i don't even think i mentioned that in my blog oh really yeah oh i honestly when you said second opinions i that was the first thing that came to my head here's in mind here's uh here's my my side with it second opinion slash third opinion slash fourth opinion in getting work done oh yeah like quotes quotes yeah go get two three i recommend getting minimum of three if you can get up to four or five quotes the better yeah we just did a quote for a, a lady on her basement redo her basement the first quote she got in when i heard the number for the first quote i threw up a little bit inside my mouth i was like People are charging that. Like, that doesn't even make any sense how they can charge that. We gave her our quote. And for our quote, we even went, I wouldn't say we went high. We just, we, we just buffered in a little bit, um, maybe like a thousand dollars extra for plumbing, thousand dollars extra for electrical, Mm -hmm. because we don't know what we're getting in until we're there. And then the electricians, we don't want to be on the hook for whatever. So we are like, it could actually fluctuate up a little more, could fluctuate down a little more based on electrical and plumbing. Yeah. So anyways, Mimi wants to play. She, She's she been hanging out outside. Been, so so um, the we gave her our quote, which was significantly better um, to like a stomachable amount. amount. Yeah. And, and then she got a third quote, as she should. That one was even more, like drastically more than her first quote. Over double, over double our quote. That's insane. Over double, for the same work, over double. How? How? Yeah, anyways. People pay it. People pay it. Roofs. Dude, roof quotes. I remember when I was doing one of the roofs, I got I got a quote at, it was like, 11 it was like 11 or 12 15 18 and 30 yeah and i was like 30 30, what if 30 was my first quote and i thought that's what it was going to be ended up being able to get it done for like 11 grand yeah which we ended up doing it for like eight but still and then let's see so that i would say massively 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 whatever you're doing work wise get three quotes yeah uh because also the other thing is is like we know people that when they're too far like when they're too booked out they will purposely raise their prices because one they either don't want to do it or they don't have time to do it so they're like i'm gonna give an astronomical price and then they just won't go with me or they will give you way more than you need so then you can like contract it out or do whatever yeah, so you, the thought behind it is you're so busy, you give an astronomical quote, they're either going to turn you down or they're going to say yes and it's going to be so much money you're fine with working weekends or hiring it out or whatever. Right. Um, so, like, that, that is why you should always get, like, multiple quotes. And right now in Eau Claire, like, a lot of contractors are still pretty far booked out. Yeah, they are. So. Especially, like, fair price ones. Yeah. Um, so that is a good reason to get a handful of quotes yep. if you're getting work done on your house. Yep. Um, the other thing, are you done with that one? Yep, done with that. Oh, God, Mimi just, I'm so worried she's going to just throw my cord. Just dive bombing. She is so excited, it's wild. Yep. Um, the other thing that I was, like, telling Sean was, like, opinions. Like, just 
a general like opinion on like what you should be doing. So like we've gone coaching or we've gotten um, advice from people and whatnot. And it's good to ask around to multiple people because people have different backgrounds. Right. People have different experiences. Right. Um, with like our coaching, that was a little hard because they live in Montana, which is way different than living in Wisconsin, I would say, price right. wise. Oh, yeah. Big time. Um, so that's why it is good to like ask around and get like multiple opinions because we all have different experiences and knowledge, which really can persuade you a lot of different ways depending on what their experiences are. 100%. I'm going to piggyback right off of this and ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Whose opinion doesn't matter? Um, I mean, I guess kind of, I don't know. Everyone's kind of could matter. Does it? I mean, not really. I mean, I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay. I don't know. This is a hard question. Is it? Kind of. Just think about it for a second. Whose opinion should you not seek out? Um, people that aren't trying in life. Okay, that's one of them. What else? Um, people with different political views? Nope. Uh, I don't know. People, two things. People who have not done it themselves. Okay, makes sense. Or who are not where you want to be. Those are the two people we want to get advice from. So we want to get advice from someone that, okay, that is a very small pool. Nothing else matters. I kind of like that, though. Because here's the deal. You got your ma, you got your dad, you mm -hmm. got your family members who've never invested. In, we're just doing investing in real estate because it's too easy. Yeah. <sighs> who've never invested in real estate before. Mm -hmm. Sean, don't you think that's risky? You're really risking a lot by buying that property. Oh, yeah, what do you know about buying property? Oh, I know you haven't bought in any. And I know that if you would have bought property at the age I was buying property at, you would be a multimillionaire right now. But you're not. And so is it risky? Yeah, there's risk to it. We just, last week's podcast was on risk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there's risk to it. But I'm not taking your advice on buying real estate because you never bought real estate and you're just looking for validation from me not doing it because you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So that you feel valid by me not taking action, you feel valid in your decisions you made the last 30 years. Would you take advice from someone that like works below someone that's done it? So like my mom. Yes, because they have experience in Right, it. yeah. Because like my mom, I mean, she does a lot of accounting for. So even if they've never done it, they've experienced through it. Yeah. So those people, you can take their advice, but it's got to be weighted advice depending on how crazy you're going in with it. Right. Here's what I'll say about that. A person going through it with somebody doesn't reap the rewards of the person actually owning it, mm -hmm. per se. So the person working for them sees, like, the headache, the dumb shit, and they may or may not see the money. Right. An accountant, like, your mom's going to see the money, so she'll see the payoff and be like, yeah, that was worth it. Yeah. But most people that just go through it be like, oh, my God, the amount of stress he went through for all that... It's not worth it to invest in real estate. Right. She doesn't see 10 years later the paycheck he gets when he sells the property because it appreciated 50% or right, 100%, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that opinion's weighted. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Honestly, like, that's one thing. Whenever Sean and I have an idea, we don't just like ask ourselves about it. Like, we ask Brooke and we ask Kyle and we ask, like, other people around us obviously they haven't gone through it either but um because we don't have people that we want to be like really close to us like we don't have andy for or rob bailey to just reach out to at any point in time and be like hey dog what do you think about this right right i mean we do know some people that are like further along than we are that we can ask that are along the path we'd want to take. Yeah. Are they where we want to be? Not necessarily, but they're on the path of where we want to be. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but that go. So yeah, that the other part of second opinion. So that's for like life decision making, moving forward vision stuff. Mm -hmm. 
those are the people you seek advice from. Yeah. Okay, second opinions from. Yeah. You can take second opinions from people in your organization or in your close circle if it affects them. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. So if, like, what we do affects Kyle and Brooke. Mm-hmm. So getting their opinion on it, absolutely, we're, we're a part of the same team. Yeah. But if I've got a friend who doesn't have anything going for him and sees me doing what I'm doing and goes, well, wh- you've got the money. Why don't you just buy a brand new truck? Mm-hmm. You got the you got the money. Just buy a brand new truck, bro. Why would you buy a used truck? You know right. what I'm saying? I'm like, well, bro, I got here because I'm not doing what you're doing. Right. You know? So if it affects them, mm. you can ask for their opinion. Yeah. Cool. I Bring love it. it. As the team. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that makes it like more, um, like everyone feels involved. So then, like they also have a stake in whatever risk you're taking. Yep. It's really good to do with like early on um, employees. But there's this one thing right here. At the end of the day, if you are the owner, you have final say. Right. Yeah. If everyone else, got to go with your gut. If everyone else got some dumb shit going on and your gut's telling you one thing, go with the gut. Mm-hmm. But by all means, feel free to get their opinions and see what they say. Yeah. But um, this is huge. This part's huge about it. If you're trying to be similar to Grant Cardone wealth-wise or like career-wise, do not get Dave Ramsey's advice because it is not going to do you any well. Right. And that, that's that's for, like, every type of which way possible. Like, depending on what you want to do, it depends on who you're going after. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, just because Dave Ramsey's in, like, the financial real estate world doesn't mean that it's going to get you to where Grant Cardone is. Absolutely. If you follow Dave Ramsey's methods, but you want to be like Grant Cardone, you just fucked your life up. Mm-hmm. So, and that's, that's what you get so often, like... <sighs> That's what's really cool about, like, Rob Bailey and Andy Frisella is, like, they're kind of in the same realm. And, like, Rob even talks about how they did, like, a whiteboard session together, like, 10 years ago. And Andy took it seriously and Rob didn't Mm -hmm. take it as seriously. Mm -hmm. And, like, look at where their companies are. Right. I'm going to give you one that's very relatable to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Jason Lund in the cities. Yeah. Josh Portraying here. Yeah. Josh is how I want to be with his um, refining, burying properties, leveraging properly, things like that, mm-hmm. and having your write-offs and stuff like that, okay? Yeah. Got coaching from Josh. And going slow, too. And going, like, taking your time, just mm-hmm. doing it right, not taking overly too risk. Josh's thing is he's going to be in the game for 50 years, so he's going to remain in the game for 50 oh, years. Yeah. I'm with it, dude. I'm like, let's go. I don't need to be crazy. I'm going to get my bread, but I'm not going to, like, blow the water um jason the difference with him and so this is why like me listening to josh makes more sense than me listening to jason in this realm Mm -hmm. jason believes in paying off all of his properties oh so he does so he brings in like we talked about in the other episode he brings in a bunch of he he, he's busting ass in his daily job wholesaling deals selling deals flipping just bringing in that money to pay for properties in cash that's not my model i'm playing I'm playing a similar model to Josh. So mm-hmm. that's who I go for advice to first mm-hmm. um, because that's who I most – he is on the path I want to be on. Yeah. Is he the end game? No. no, because I've got a few other different goals and no one agrees with everyone completely. But he's on my path a yeah. lot more than Jason is. So, But in the other realm to that – I will listen to Jason on flipping more mm-hmm. because I actually want to have a, a like more of a flipping company like Jason than um, Josh, than Josh, Josh right? Yeah. yeah. So, cool. I love it. Um, anything else? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, cool. we'll have one more episode here in the studio, and then we're going to be on the road. Yes. So you, we may have some different backgrounds for the next videos i might also not be able to post videos for the next two weeks i'll find out we'll find out i have to see how capable my tablet is yeah um last thing get opinions by other professionals Mm -hmm. accountants attorneys yes etc um 
Find a good attorney. Find a good attorney. Get good attorney's opinions. They, I, I wrote in my blog about a particular instance Ryan and I had. If you guys want to know about that instance, feel free to read the blog on tutorslife.com. But um, it was, we did not talk with our attorney before making a decision. And it ended up costing us a little bit. Yeah. Um, is in the blog if you want to read more in depth than that. But after that, I pretty much learned a five-minute phone call to an attorney that costs you $50, 30 to $50, whatever it is, is worth it. Mm-hmm. Calling your accountant is worth it. Sending an email, taking one extra day yeah. is worth it. Sean, I think, calls our attorney like twice a week. Lately, more because we've been Dude, doing a lot of like, I'm gonna changes tell you what, man. directions. I'm going to tell you out. what. When I get my quarterly bill, I'm going to be like, fuck. That's all I got to say about that. You're going to be happy, though. Oh, dude, so happy. Help me. Whatever that bill is, whatever that bill is, I promise you, he's already saved me that much this year. Oh, yeah. 100%. I promise you. I promise you. Or this quarter, even whatever it is. Yeah. I, yes. You were doing some business ownership changes and new businesses and change. It's we're doing a lot of stuff, and he's been actually giving us some really good advice on what is the best route to go. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, second opinions in your professional world is huge, huge, huge. Highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. That's what I got. I love it. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.